one foot in front of the other. Eyes forward, never looking back. The past is the past, and that is something Rusthilt continues to remind himself of. He cannot save his parents. He cannot bring back his farm. And after leaving the hub, he cannot return there, assuming that he's going to live a life there. Never forget where you came from, but never let your past consume you. These are the thoughts that swirl through Rusthilt's mind as he stares at the gates of Squin. At least five guards stand there looking down at him, wondering what he's doing. Will he come forward, or is it somebody they should kill and just forget about? And Rusthilt wonders if he'll find solace there, true safety, something more than the hub could offer. Maybe gear, or maybe friends. While he didn't die on his half a day travel from the hub to here, it was still scary, dangerous, and lonesome. But there's no turning back now. There is only moving forward. Will Squin be the place Rust Hill finds safety, survival, and everything he had hoped for? Or will Squin be the place Rust Hill takes his final steps before being placed into the ground and forgotten by the wasteland? Rust Hilt's first journey was a success, at least as much as a success as he could hope for. He wasn't robbed, killed, enslaved, or worse, while he was walking from the hub to Squin, and yet here we are, in one piece, with a little bit of better equipment than we did last time around, but not terribly much better. Slapped together metallic helmet over his head is hard to call much better than what he had prior, but it's better, and that's all he could hope for. And before him, not too far out in this little dust storm that's kicked up in the wastelands in the Great Desert, is Squin. So welcome back to Kenshi. You're going to notice a couple of different things here and there. Um, I've, I've downloaded uh, like two, I think, two quality of life mods. Nothing that are going to change the game itself. Um, just stuff that uh, helps me play a little easier. Uh, a little bit of a cleaner HUD. Definitely a lot cleaner of a HUD and some other things that we won't see till later on anyway. Um, so don't worry about that right now. Here we are, uh, our wonderful boy, who is looking actually pretty damn good at 10 strength, 3 toughness, 2 dexterity, and our athletics is about to be uh, a 30. But really, the worry is what's in Squin. I don't know much about Squin, and they've got quite a few guards out there. So what they're going to hopefully they don't murder us. And they are... 100 Guardian Shek Kingdoms. Right, Sheks. Uh, if we swing up here, you can actually see they are not humans. They are not human at all. They are a weird alien tentacle monster desert race. Uh, we'll see if they have anything to say to us when we get close. Hopefully, they'll just leave us alone. Oh, there we go. We already got some stuff. Hmm, more outsiders. First our, first our cities fall. Next, we welcome the flat skin with open arms. What next? Ooh, we must be flat skins. Humans? Humans are flat skins, probably? Yeah, whatever your business here. Make it quick, flat skin. Yo, this racism is unnecessary. Hey, how's it going? I'm going in. All right. Well, they didn't bother me, so that's good, I guess. And here we are, the hub. Let's take a good look here at the, uh, not the hub, <laughs> Squin. Let's take a good look at Squin from the outside. Immediately, it seems a lot bigger than the hub, but it's actually not that much bigger. It's just a straightaway. It's hard to call it a city, but at the same time, post-apocalypse, cities existing is unlikely in the first place. Uh, it's just a small little place with a tower over here. That's a sign of a hiker. That's interesting. That might be a store. Uh, justice? The scales of justice? Or a bank, maybe? Uh, is there no bar in Squin? Oh, nope, there it is. We have a bar right there. And uh, armory, and then whatever this is. Maybe a, sort, a guild of a sort. Well, uh, maybe we'll swing out and just kind of hit each place one after the other. What is everything here in town? Hello? What is this? I can talk to you. Hmm. I'm a bounty hunter looking for work. Nothing. Do you have any confiscated goods to sell? I'm here to bail my friend out. No, no friend to bail out. Uh, they do not have anything worth buying, but this is a bounty hunter. Interesting. 
Hmm, for the hunt, uh, then hunt for it, Hunter. Check the wanted poster, search the outlands for criminals in hiding, then bring them to me for your reward. Well, thanks for the info. So they don't, they don't hire us out. Is there anything upstairs? Ooh, training dummies. Oh, can we actually use these without getting in trouble now? Or will we get in trouble for using them? Uh, is there another floor? There's prisoners up here. Well, what happens if we use these to train? Also, uh, somebody had told me that this weapon is better than this weapon, and I don't know how that's possible, so let me look real quick. It's less useful over uh, on, on robots, I guess. And it gets a plus one attack bonus, but plus 10% damage on humans. Cutting damage, 0.31, as opposed to the... Why is this... Why, why am I being told this is technically better than this? The damage on this is still better than this. It's faster by about 0.2... But this is just straight up, I feel like, a better weapon. So I think we're gonna just sit here and train for a bit. And uh, if, we can, if we can get away with this for a while, I, I think actually the very first thing Rust Tilt is gonna do is train. And try and get his skills to manageable levels. And if we get yelled at, we get yelled at. But for now, while we can, Rust Tilt seeing an opportunity, something he was desperate for in the hub, is gonna try and take advantage of it now. He's still well fed and he's still eager. He's got a confidence and, and an eagerness to him that he wants to just get better. Just get better. Be able to defend yourself in any way possible. And so that's what he's doing. Just going to whack this thing uh, with his saber over and over and over again. And then if it ever caps out, we can maybe go ahead and uh, this is not growing at all. So it's only upping our attack, but not our actual weapon skills. Why? So let's take a look at what each one of these does. Melee attack, okay. Melee attack, frequency of attacks on opponent, chance of attacks not getting blocked. Ways to train, fight with swords, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that makes sense. So if I say swap to this, do like that, uh, and we'll go ahead and click arrange. Will this not up my skill in, say, katanas? Well, he's using it, I can hear it. No, it, has, it does nothing for katanas. But it is upping our melee attack, and he's swinging a lot faster. I, st I still say we do this. I still say we sit here and we train for as long as we can. Still riding the high of confidence from his meager pickings against the bandits from the hub, Rust Hilt quickly jumps into the first opportunity he sees. Unwatched and uncared for by the bounty hunters below, he quickly and readily uses their training dummies. It's kill or be killed. And Rust Hilt will be damned if he's the one that's going to be killed. Maybe feeling a little bit intimidated when he walked in here and the very first thing that the guards did was insult him for being human, a smooth skin. The reason he's taking advantage of these dummies right away. If he's walking into a hostile city, Rust Tilt needs to be able to defend himself. And they're not paying too much attention here and haven't come up here at all since he's been here. So in the midst of that, Rust Tilt gets an idea. Do they have anything worth stealing? It may not be worth it to do so, but it's, my, it's at least worth checking. Nothing here in the general storage chest and nothing in the weapon racks. There's still more to be found. Basic first aid kits, splint kits. Let's see what's up here. Lots and lots and lots of jail cells. Not going to be putting ourselves in that, but we just spent an entire day training on a training dummy. It's going to be uh, interesting. Now, I don't know if it's worth... Like, I don't know how stealing is going to work here, but... If I want a splint kit, let's take the splint kit. And we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get in trouble, maybe we won't. Only one way to find out. And then up here, there's a couple of barrels we might be able to explore. Maybe there's something here. Not, not in those, nothing. Well, the only thing we grabbed was a splint kit. And genuinely, that might not be a bad thing. But let's continue exploring this little city and see what it has for us. I think we'll sneak around for a bit still, uh, because it'll do us well to do so. And there are all kinds of animals wandering around. Uh, some pack beasts belonging to the nomads. A goat also belonging to the nomads. Perhaps there's a nomad traveling crew somewhere near here. Um, but for now, let's see what's over in these shops. Let's explore the town just a little bit more. There is a curiosity uh, to to what the hell is happening here. Is this a store? Uh, we can't, I mean, we can sneak over to them, but we'll see what they've got. See anything you like. What do you got? Show me your goods. Ooh, oh damn. 
oh, this is an armor smith. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised as, you know, obviously what it is. Um, she has a 20% chance to fence this thing. So the reason that it's only, it's, we only have a 20% chance at making this something that they would buy is because we stole it. Uh, and we stole it from people they know, and they have a high chance of, of knowing that that's where it comes from. So all this armor is really, really jacked up in price. Normally it's of a normal value of 303 cats, this partic particular boot set, but they're selling it at 1.2 thousand because they can, and there's nothing I can do about that. Good to know though, good to know. Um, let's actually see what else is going on in here. They have guards, obviously, but what about on the, on the second floor up here? We'll swing up here, let's see if we get followed. 48% chance to sneak. Well, if we sneak, are we being seen? Oh, now we are. Hello. All right, well, they keep armor up here. Noted. Again, Rustil doesn't want to turn to crime. He was raised well, but petty theft in the wasteland is almost necessary. Now, is it something, is it worth stealing all that armor? Probably not. This has got to be weaponsmith. But, yeah, that's exactly what this is. Uh, we won't mess with them too much. But it's good to know that that's there in, in case dire circumstances arise that force Rust Hilt's hand. But his plan is exactly uh, to be a good person for the most part. You know, he's like neutral good in terms of D&D. &D. Hmm, you think yourself a warrior or a clown with a sword? Wait, are we getting... See, this is why I wanted to train. We are getting yelled at by somebody. I don't have any interest in fighting you, but let's continue on. Through the city itself uh, to see what's around here. Now the bar is here, so let's go into the bar and see what what's haps. Here's some rumors uh, in the bar. Wow, this is way, way, way bigger. And we can sleep on some of this stuff? We've got leather here, uh, all kinds of stuff we could steal if we wanted to. Hello, who are you? Shek Warrior, an outsider. How exotic. I'm curious, outsider. Do you know much of Shek custom? Uh, no, actually. My my father spoke of you as a as a species and how uh, warrior tribe like focused you are. But outside of that, I know nothing. Um, not really. No. Around here, Shek's understanding is measured in bravery and battle skill, as in the same footsteps of Kral. Foreigners are only tolerated in this town for their trade under the Stone Golem's orders. Every Shek in the city is itching for a fight since she came to power, especially against a honorless foreigner like you. I suggest you keep your head down if you want to leave the city in one piece. Oh, okay. Uh, that's a lot of info to take in just a short amount of time, and it worries me a bit. So, um, let's see. I have more honor in my pinky than most Shek have in their whole body. I don't know. Shek, uh, Rust Hilt is a, is a good man. At heart, he is a good man. He would not say such things. Um... The stone, he'd may, maybe just merely be curious. The stone golem. You really know nothing, do you? The stone golem is our queen. She has a more passive take on dealing with our enemies than most people would like. People are on edge and pent up, ready to fight. Passive? We Shek love nothing more than running, all swords blazing in uncertain battle. We live for that challenge, but it weakens our numbers. The queen knows this and she plans for it, but not everybody around here is a fan of this approach. Huh. Well, I mean, that's smart if you want the species to survive in the post-apocalypse. Um, sounds messy. Interesting. Thanks for the info. I agree. I, I agree with her. Foolish suicide missions achieve nothing in the end. Hmm. Well, opinions like that are best kept to yourself if you want to avoid trouble. All right. Good to know. I'm glad I, I know that. All right. Who else wants to talk? I lie with a flat skin. Don't make me laugh. Well, okay. guess that means we don't get any check here. Um, how about you? Ruka. Oh, Ruka, buddy. Looking at my horns, flat skin? Uh, I couldn't care less about your horns. Good, because I can still prove my worth in battle without them. I have a question for you, flat skin. Uh, what do you do if you are outnumbered on the battlefield? Ooh, good question. Fight tactically. You take out the weakest opponent first. You hightail it the hell out of there. Simple. Is there even a choice? You keep fighting till the end. Surrender and hope your life will be spared. Play dead and return for their heads another day. So personally, I think uh, maybe Ruka would do something like, you know, go in because he's, you know, a Shek. But I think you fight tactically. Take out the weakest opponent first. I think if Rust Hilt was to try and think tactically, that might be where his head goes. Truth. We must even the odds against us when our situation looks bleak. We fight the enemy to the death and we die with honor on the battlefield. But I didn't die. I awoke surrounded by death and still but still alive. 
They labeled me a deserter and cut my horns on my return. I am no longer a warrior, but a servant. But you fought bravely, you didn't deserve that. You lost your horns, but at least you're still alive. Well, now we know that they cut horns if they're determined that these are horns, A, and that this is kind of a mark of, of traitorism and servitude. You fought bravely, you didn't deserve that. Perhaps, either way, I will not remain here as an unclad warrior, but you, you seem different to the other outsiders I have met Flatskin. Let us band together. I am intrigued to fight alongside you. Ooh, he's offering him friendship. And Rostilt, I think at this moment, is both excited and nervous. Because one, he knows that those in the Wasteland are Roman bands. Being a sole, a sole warrior in the Wasteland is a recipe for disaster. And it's been a long time since Rustilt has had anybody that he could consider not just a friend, but at the very least trustworthy. Now, is Ruka trustworthy? Well, that depends. We know in his species tradition that he is considered lesser, or she is considered lesser. Lesser uh, because of the uh, returning alive after a battle. They are seem very Klingon-like, but she'll be eager to fight. I think, I think Rustilt accepts. I think he sees a friend in Ruka, clearly looking to get away from the life that she has fallen into, sees Rusthilt and sees an opportunity. Rusthilt is a nomadic man and he wears it on his skin. He carries very little. And because of that, he is a, uh, he's obvious that he does not belong here and perhaps doesn't belong anywhere. And in that kinship, they don't, both don't belong, both Ruka and Rusthilt. And I think Rusthilt feels that and accepts Ruka to join him, the first friend of what may or may not become a motley crew, but at least you will no longer be wandering alone. It would be an honor to have you by our side, Ruka. And now we actually have a recruit. You've just hired your first recruit. You can select different squad members by clicking on their icons in the squad panel, or by using the number keys, or by left click dragging over the, in, uh, the in-game character. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on Ruka now. You can check your character statistic, uh, skill statistics by opening the stats menus from the amp. Okay, well, let's see what their, hers are. Wow, she is already much better than us in almost everything. Um, to perform first aid, exchange inventory items, guard, follow, and carry squad members. Uh, hold right on them or on their portrait to bring up interactions menu. And range in different items in the squad. Okay, so taking a look, she's already way better than we are as far as skill. She's a 10 in everything, uh, except for pole arms. Melee attack of 11, melee defense of 10, lock picking of 1, athletics of 7, so we're a lot more dexterous in, in athletics, and she has a minus 1 to her field medic skills. But still, she is a warrior race, and in that, she is a warrior. She comes with a little bit of stuff, but uh, can I go ahead and let's grab them both and move them over here. Uh, let's see, get rid of this, and I'm curious how we're going to make this work. Trade. Um, I think we give her a little food. I think we give her another bandage and the splint. Uh, she is wearing pants, shoddy grade, shoddy grade, shoddy grade, and a plank. And we'll, we'll slap some dried meat over there for her as well. And uh, just kind of equip her. And, and it's going to be some time of just getting to know one another. Seeing if we do get along. But she still lacks armor. Uh, but we're going to have her follow Rust Hilt. So we can just worry about Rust Hilt first and foremost. Let's head upstairs. And let's see if we're, we're followed. Because if we're not, instantaneously we actually find ourselves with an opportunity. If anything, we'll keep her guarding. If anything, it'll allow us to pick the lock and see if we can pop this open. Maybe there's something here we can take. If not, it'll at least help us. We're going to stay sneaking while we do this. Well, as we finish picking the lock, we have ourselves a guard up here, so... We'll never figure out what's in there, at least. I don't know, can I look? I can look. Oh boy, 32% chance of stealing. Um, not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Well, as we were picking the lock and the lock came, pick came undone, uh, the guard came up. So, uh, we can take a look at our stats first. Lock picking got up to five, stealth is at eight, which is nice. But inside here is a bunch of food with a 32% chance of stealing, which we can't really afford to do. All right, well, uh, the bar is a nice place, not gonna lie. Let's uh, let's swing out here and check out some more buildings. So that is, this was the bar, right? Yeah, this was the bar. Uh, across the street, and we're sneaking everywhere just for the, for the skills, is not a whole lot. Steel bars, uh, all that stuff's useful. All right, remove yourself, got it. On my way out. 
sorry, sorry. So that, that must have been there. That must have been that particular person's house. Fair enough. All right, well, continuing onward. Which way did I come from? Okay, I came from that way. So let's go this way and make our way through the rest of this uh, town. Squin. All right. So this, I imagine, is like the police station. No, it's a new customer. So she's real excited, or he's real excited about a new customer. Let's see what they are. See anything you like? Show me your goods. What do you got? Oh, just a kind of general store, then? You have a lot of different stuff. Simple rug. Some supplies. Nothing major. Um, but yeah, you're just a general store. Not a bad thing to say, that, you know, that, that you're a general store. Just saying. And then last but not least, this weird, like, journeyman area? I'm not quite sure what this is. Um, let's see. Don't sneak anymore. There's a human back here, actually. That's fantastic. How can I help? God, thank. It's just good to see another smooth skin over here. Ooh, are these backpacks? Large backpack, medium backpack, wooden backpack. Holy crap, everything is so expensive. Map of the border zone. Oh, this place is going to be very valuable. Small backpack. Well, what, what does a large backpack run us? Three thousand dollars man that's so much money and i don't know how i'm gonna start earning any cash at this point because we're running low on money we may just want to keep traveling um okay well it's good to know that these guys are here um i think we just leave this place for now that's the entirety of squin so i think we can actually operate within squin now without worrying too too much i think we're just going to keep sneaking because it's going to get us uh stealth stats as you can see, it's going to go up pretty quickly because we're stealthing around a big public area. But now that we have this place, uh, we know we can at least train here. Uh, it might be worth it for us to do exactly that. Come in and train a little bit more, and hopefully it works out for us. Oh, people are sneezing. It sounds like they're dreaming about a war. And I want you to train on this one. Okay, and then together, training buddies, Ruka and Rust Hilt continue um, their training. Quietly at night, Rust Hilt realizes nobody's paying attention to them. After a little bit of training at night, he's able to sneak in very, very quietly. We need food. That's what Rust Hilt's really mostly worried about right now is food. But um, he's also interested in something as well copper. If he can grab that piece of copper without being seen like that, we can actually do a quick check. We can see how much copper sells for here because we do know where a copper vein lies back at the hub. And if we can grab uh, it at the hub Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. If we can gr uh, make treks back and forth uh, from the hub to here uh, we may be able to make a good amount of money that way. So, what else is around? Raw iron. We also know that that's something we can grab. And maybe get make some use of it, too. Fuel, standard first aid kit. Let's go ahead and grab the standard first aid kit. Building materials are also good. Splint kit, valuable. But we just mostly want basics. We're not here to rob them blind of everything that they have. Just stuff that we need to get an idea as to how things are going to work around here. 52% chance. I can't risk anything not out in the open. I cannot risk not stealing things and things that are not in the open. So let's grab building materials, because we know we're going to need those at some point. It's still really early in the morning, so nobody's been able to pop in here yet and realize we've done what we've done. So we're just going to move out. as to not leave evidence. Our first success... Okay. Our first... You know what? Leave the door open. Our first successful crime. We actually have some stuff. So, let's see what they what they would end up buying it for here. That's the big thing. We have building supplies stashed uh, that we can do something with eventually. But m it's, it's all about trying to make some money around here. So let's actually go over to the Armorsmith and see what the Armorsmith is willing to buy raw materials for. So we have, boom, uh, mm, sell value 82, value 31. We're only going to get 82 out of it. Unfortunate. Not much we can do there. All right. Well, I think a backpack is in the works for us. We need one. So we're going to have to go buy a backpack now. 
And I think with a backpack, we can start at least worrying about being able to carry a lot more stuff around. So let's go back in here. Hopefully the, uh, the shopkeeper's back. Yep. Hey, yeah, I'm looking to buy, actually. Let's, let's buy a medium backpack. That'll be half of our cash, but let's buy one. And then on Ruka, let's also buy one, but let's get her a smaller one. Right there. A little bit of a small backpack, but one nonetheless. I, do they wear it? Let's get out here real quick. Making his first purchase to hopefully be more productive. They do. They do actually wear it. Backpack and another one on there. Now, I assume it's encumbrance a bit. Um, encumbrance reduction, 50%. Yeah, it definitely affects us in combat. So we may want to, when the fighting breaks out, throw the backpack on the ground as quickly as we can, fight as unencumbered as we can, and then continue. All right, well, Squin is a place that holds promise for us. What the hell is that? And there seems to be quite a lot more going on there, but I'm thinking if we want to make some money, now that we have two people, <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but mining might be the way to go traveling back and forth a little bit, especially with all the stuff that we're now carrying. But what I'm gonna do first is actually swing in here. I think we're gonna restock on some food. I wonder if food is cheaper here. Oh, they're actually making purchases. People are actually spending their money. No, the food's gonna be in the bar. I did not realize people were actually spending cash here. I thought they were just kind of wandering around, but I, I did not realize that that's not the case. Dried fish. Dried meats. I think that's what we're gonna have to take. We'll we'll go broke on dried meats for now, but we are really now in a in a bad, bad, bad spot. Um so Squin is built into a valley. And it loops all the way around over here. And there is something over there. Well, actually, let's go then let's go and explore. Let's take Ruka out. Let's see what this is. We'll rush out there. It's gonna also help us as we carry, you know, heavier things and a backpack full of stuff. It's gonna help our strength and our athletics. Our strength actually has naturally gone up to an 11 since we started here. And that's a good start. Look at this. I imagine seeing this on his left-hand side, he's just left in bewilderment and wonderment. Not that he hasn't seen them before, but he never knew what these things were. Leftovers of, a, of an ancient uh, advanced technological race. Something maybe from beyond the stars. Who knows? We discovered a way station. I don't know what a way station is. And there's a camp to our left as well. Already we're a little, I'm a little nervous. There's something up ahead that could prove problematic for us. A way station and a campsite. Though we're going towards the campsite, apparently. This is like a big mech. It's up this hill and around. So if we were to go over here and see what this is, what what are we gonna run into? I can't really see. We're here? Oh, yep, 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 pause, 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 we're here. I hear flies, and it's all bandits. We have an unconscious bandit, 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 bandit. Let's go into sneaking mode. Hopefully that puts them both into sneaking mode here. And it's just a bunch of dust bandits. All of which are wounded in some way. They were fighting something. Not sure how far or when, but they're all injured. Their numbers outnumber us quite a bit. And even though he can see unconscious bodies lying around the campfire, and some of them wounded, uh, obviously so, as they bleed from their stomachs and their chest, their numbers are what scares, are what scares him. It looks like they were hung up fighting starving bandits, and that's, that might have been it. Starving bandits. We'll do a lot of, oh, no, 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 no. We're gonna run, we gotta run, we gotta run. Do not sneak, run. Charge, cut them down if they see if they got any loot. Yep, they wanna, they wanna, they wanna rob us. So immediately they get up to, to, to attack us as we approach the starving bandit. Uh, and they got a couple of shots off on Ruka, but nothing that can't be healed. We hopefully are gonna be faster than they are. Um, but I want to make our way, way over there. They're attacking Ruka first. She doesn't sneak well, so that doesn't surprise me. This thing on the ground looks like an old machine of some sort, not really a mech. But we got to zoom in all the way in and see what the hell's about to happen to poor Ruka here. 
We're fast. We got smacked in the stomach, though. We're not fast enough. If we can get back in time, though, the guards will save us. No, 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 Ruka. Passive? Passive. Please. Follow. Ruka, you need to run, girl. I will grab you both and move you where I need to go. Over there, please. Ruka got swarmed a bit, but we're still gonna make a, a break for it. Run, run, run. Rust Hilt, fearing for his life. His stomach is, is bleeding out. He's almost unconscious. Down he goes. I'm gonna have Ruka keep running. Because if we can get them caught, if she can stay alive until the guards can get to her, It'll be, we'll be good. The, the further she goes, the better. Please, please, please. Yep, here they come, here they come. Okay. <sighs> okay, so here's what happened. Rustil got destroyed. Uh, they were seen because Ruka wasn't sneaking well enough because they attacked her first and went for her. So Rustil shouting, run! They run for their lives from these bandits that they stumbled across and maybe greedily tried to starve, uh, rob a corpse on the ground that they should have realized wasn't gonna have anything. Rust Hilt went down immediately. Uh, his stomach got bashed in and is just profusely bleeding, but Rook had to make a decision. Stop and try and pick him up and run or make a break for it, for it knowing she's better um, in melee combat than he is, knowing that she has a better chance of at least surviving until then, making a break for Squin, hoping that the guards will save her. And it seems as though that is exactly what's gonna happen. So we're gonna slow things down now that we're here, but she's down, she got knocked unconscious. Unfortunately, this fight is going to happen and it's very possible. Oh no, that she's unconscious for a good long time. So they're annihilating the bandits very easily. Is anybody going to heal me? They're chasing down the band, their leftover bandits still. Where's he going? He's running and these guys are just murdering. Is he coming to save me? No. Where are they going? Ah, ban oh my God. There's so many of them. Wow, I did not realize there were so many. Rustelt is dying, but he should have some time. It's Ruka who needs to get up. And if Ruka doesn't get up, they're in a lot of trouble. So what Ruka needs to do is, is live Bandage and then run to, to Rust Hilt and save him. This could be where Rust Hilt dies. Okay, she's up. Pause. We're immediately going to bandage ourselves. Uh, let's move. I need Ruka to move. Okay, and then we're gonna go boom, first aid ourselves. I just need her to, to redo her own stomach. And then you need to stop and just go over there now. You need to move as you're, as fast as you can because you need to save Rust Hilt from bleeding out completely. No, Ruka, you need to come over here and first aid. Running over to a new friend who bravely died in battle is gonna get saved the last minute. There we go. He's in a recovery coma. It's a start. She is not a field medic by any stretch, but she's better than nothing. And it's gonna allow Rust Hilt to live again. She's going to pick him up Ruka, feeling maybe even a little responsible for this new friend that she said she, you know, was so good in combat for. Uh, gonna pull him away and hold him somewhere safe. So up she goes with Rust Hilt and then gingerly places him on the ground. Okay. And then back to tending to herself. She now has to watch over Rust Hilt, ensure that he lives another day. She can't first aid herself anymore. So she's going to have to take something off of off of Rust Hilt to continue to be able to first aid herself. Actually, I think she'll be okay. I think at here, we'll pick him up and we're going to take him back into Squin. Where we're going to place him down somewhere in a bar. She's slightly injured, but none of their limbs got to the point where they were going to fall off. That's the key. They're hurt, they're broken, but they're not impossibly repaired. Oh god. Don't sneak anymore. Just make your way back to Squin. The guards are coming out quite often as they get close. But now we can actually uh, maybe rob the dead. Get them 
proper gear. We've got ourselves a prototype jump, a prototype jump junk bow. We'll take the ammo. You have no armor, Ruka, so now you have some armor. And your pants are possibly better than this. They're both shoddy grade. Blunt resistance, 13, 8, 25, 50. Actually, these might be better. But we can sell these off. And I'm going to take this and throw it in the bag because we can sell it off for some money. And now Ruka's actually got some gear. Some good, proper gear gear okay I want this in your bag and we'll swap boots we'll throw that in his inventory Ruka this time doing what's needed and uh, we actually have some stuff to sell please do not carrying a sword doesn't make you a warrior using it does yeah well sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do we're moving in and I'm going to see if we can sell this stuff. I don't know if they'll buy goods that are not theirs. He's still in a recovery coma. Um, so to the bar it is. We'll drop him at the bar at least. And then we're going to go sell some things. Though this is actually helping our strength quite a bit. Quite a bit. Into the bar. Put down. I'm going to first aid ourselves. I'm just going to get it done. So she can heal up. <laughs> Rust Tilt is just... He's going to be in a recovery coma for some time, I think. And there's not much he can do about it. Hey there, would you want to buy? Here to buy, outcast. Rude. Sell, actually. Sell value. All of it's actually pretty good value. But they they will take it. The fencing chance is 100. I think we'll keep this. And sell the rest. Make ourselves some money. Immediately putting us a little halfway over to the 1k mark. And then... She sits... And she waits for Rust Hilt to awaken. She is loyal. She is a warrior. It is the honorable thing to do. Well, um, I was in the middle of resting, and uh, Rust Hilt got scooped up by the bar guard. I'm hoping that they're just going to be putting him outside, but Ruka immediately gets up. This is the middle of the night and follows. Yep, he's just being dropped outside. No corpses allowed in the tavern, I guess. Fair enough. So, I think what Ruka would do... Would pick up Rust Hilt. Move just to the side, out of the way, but where there's street lights. Where one can be watched and seen. Gently place him on the ground. Ooh, yeah, that's fine. And, wait. Two new friends, two strangers. Ruka finds herself at an impasse, a fork in the road. She has a couple of choices. She could fight if the match was merely one-on-one, -on -one, but in this wasteland, that's unlikely. Traveling far beyond the city is dangerous, and still staying in the city still holds its perils. But Rust Hilt does not look to be rousing anytime soon. His stomach and torso wounds are so severe that it could be days, more weeks, before Rust Hilt wakes up once more. Does Ruka leave? find a safe place to place Rust Hilt and try and make some money so that when he does eventually awaken, they have something to work with. A start. As they did spend all of their money prior to exploring just a little bit further south. Or does she stand by Rust Hilt, day in and day out, guarding him from the dangers of the waste, but making no progress towards their next goal? It's a question that heavily sits on the forefront of Ruka's mind. There is no right choice here, and yet the wrong choice could kill them both. Let the next step be a cautious one for Ruka.